Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Money's with Mover. I am Mover, C.W. Lemoyne, author of the Spectre series and the Alex Shepard series. Uh, if you haven't picked up Fitney Flight, it is now available in any ebook or paperback format. Uh, it is the latest in the series, although you don't have to have read the entire series to get caught up. It is a standalone book, but it helps. But uh, please pick that up, leave a review. It does help support the channel. Also, on supporting the channel, now t shirts and posters are available uh, based on popular demand. So uh, check that out. I should be getting those in pretty soon. I'll be able to wear it on the channel. Uh, today is Memorial Day. I hope you guys are having a great holiday weekend. And uh, take a minute to reflect on what the holiday actually means. Uh, you know, today we honor those that have uh, paid the ultimate sacrifice and given their lives for our freedom. Uh, and one such charity that honors that is uh, Folds of Honor. They give scholarships to the uh, children and family members of the fallen and injured in combat. So a worthy cause, good friend of mine that uh, runs it, Major Dan, uh, totally veteran run. So uh, please uh, support them if you're looking for a good cause to support. On today's episode, um, I've talked about it a lot in the past about doing an NVG episode. So um, today I thought I would uh, explain kind of how NVGs work, night vision goggles, and what it's like to fly at night in a fighter because it's a little different than civilian flying. All right, so what are in night vision goggles? Well, there are two uh, image intensifier tubes that attach to a bracket that take uh, ambient lighting uh, and turn them and magnify them so that you can see at night. Whereas your vision is usually about 2200 at night unaided, night vision goggles can take it down all the way to 2025 to 2040. So uh, it's a very good improvement. However, current technology, uh, generation three intensifier tubes that we use uh, usually are green monochrome images. So with a uh, set of night vision goggles, you get about a 40 by 40 field of view, which is not much. It's like looking through a soda straw, but it does help and it does have some benefits. So how does the technology work? Well, you know, FLIR, forward-looking infrared, uses far infrared area of the electromagnetic spectrum to create an image. The NVGs use the red portion of the IR spectrum and near, and it all depends on illumination. And by illumination, we use millilux to me measure it, high illumination being 2.2 or greater, and low illumination being anything under that. And that's just how much light you're getting from where the moon's positioned, stuff like that. So uh, they can enhance your situational awareness, help you avoid terrain. You can see the terrain now, you can see, um, you can see lights, uh, aircraft lighting, un, non covert, just normal aircraft lighting can be seen upwards of 50 miles and even a lit cigarette you can see out to five miles. And that can be dangerous because many of wingmen has tried to join on an airliner that they thought was their flight lead because they see a little flashing strobe and they're like, oh, that's that's my guy. And it's really 50, 60 miles away in a airline track and not uh, in the airspace that they're working in. I can't say I've done that before, but it is possible. But it's also pretty good. You can see all the stars. You can see uh, pretty much all the lights. You can see the ground. You can see the terrain. You can see pretty much everything. I mean, it doesn't turn night in the day, but it gives you so much more uh, situational awareness. And also you can see shooting stars, which is kind of cool, even though sometimes they look like surface air missiles. Uh, in combat, you can see anti-aircraft artillery, you can see uh, actual surface air missiles, and you can see clouds. You can see and avoid thunderstorms and clouds and stuff that you might not be able to see with the naked eye. So it's a really good situational enhancing uh, thing. So what are some of the limitations? Well, the actual cockpits themselves themselves uh, can be a limitation because some of the aircraft lighting may or may not be modified to support uh, NVG, so night vision compatibility. So, for example, the F-18A that I flew did not have uh, NVG compatible lighting, so we'd have to turn it off. And the reason you'd have to do that is because it's taking that ambient light and magnifying it, and if there's any bad lighting, it will amplify it to the point that it washes it out and you can't see anything. So when I fly the, the Hornet in red air, which we did do red air at night, 
uh, we'd have to just turn all the cockpit lighting off and just rely on the HUD. Uh, and I also had like a finger light that was in VG compatible. So if I needed to look at something, I could just point, look, turn it off and be good. In the F-16, we did have lighting that was in VG compatible. And I would also wear Pelican lights on my helmet, Velcroed on, which allowed me to look uh, at the, you know, my kneeboard card and, and all that stuff, or, uh, you know, lineup card, as they say in the Air Force. And one of the things to note is that when you're using night vision goggles, you're actually only using the goggles to look outside the cockpit and through the HUD. The goggles are focused to infinity. So when you pre-flight, you are going to what's called the Hoffman tester, and it, you go into this, you know, life support or the PR shop, depending on Air Force or Navy. You turn the lights off, put the curtain around you, put the NVGs on, and you set the relief, so how far it is away from your eyes, and then you start focusing them. And you focus them to infinity, and it gives you an eye chart that basically tells you how good you're able to focus them, because no, not all NVGs are the same, your eyes aren't the same, or whatever. So really, you're looking for the 2030 to 2040, 2025's awesome. Uh, typically, you can get the 2025 to 2030. But you focus them in, and this is the most critical part, because it's just like wearing a bad pair of prescription lenses. If you focus them, if they look right, but they're just off, uh, it can give you a headache and you can feel like crap the next day. So it's very important to get that right. And that's also part of why the diopter um, rules exist in the Air Force, because some of the equipment we have, like night vision goggles, you can only focus them so much. And outside of that, you'll never get a clear image. So that's why the, the vision requirements are what they are. Even though they might be 20-200, we do have the diopter limits because you just would never be able to fly uh, with night vision goggles, even you know with glasses. You focus them out, you focus them, and then in the cockpit, you look underneath them to look at the engine instruments, to look at the HSI, uh, the radar, uh, the weapon systems, all that stuff inside the cockpit, you're actually looking underneath the goggles. And that's why it's important to have MVG compatible lighting because you still want to see inside or to have the finger light like I had in the Hornet. It wasn't ideal to have the finger light. It's much better to have uh, compatible lighting. So tactically speaking, what, what are the capabilities? Why do we, why don't we fly with them? Well, um, they don't turn night and a day, as I've talked about, but they give you so much more situation awareness. You can uh, visually identify aircraft way far away than you can, even, you know, sometimes even better than you can um, during the day because of, you know, if they have a strobe on or something uh, and uh, normal lighting. Close air support's a great thing because, because you're in that IR spectrum, you can see IR pointers, you can see lasers. So, uh, you know, whereas they might in the past, they would have to light up the target area with a, a flare or something like that. Like that parachute flare uh, in the with night vision goggles you can be totally covert and you know the 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 JTAC on the ground that you're working with doing close air support can mark a target with an IR pointer and no one else ever sees it and you see it because it's bright uh, and then between you and your flight leader wingman you can both make sure you're looking at the same thing uh, and then also you can see I mean you can see the convoy that's blacked out that no one else can see so there's a lot of advantages to being able to fly with night vision goggles uh, in both air to air and air to ground and then flying low level you can see terrain now there are some limitations just like in the day uh, high illumination and moon angle can create shadows to where you can't see terrain, especially now you're only looking in monochromatic green. So you may not have uh, the cultural features that you thought you had and it can be dangerous. So we, we do take certain precautions, especially if it's low illumination where you lose all that detail, we take certain precautions to make sure that we're not uh, running into terrain or each other. But uh, when you're out flying at you know formation, now, because it's a 40 by 40 field of view, you're not flying fingertip, you're not flying very close. Filling up the 40 by 40 uh, field of view with the aircraft gives you about 500 feet, and that's about as close as you'll ever get, and it's about as close as I ever want to get anyway. But you can fly off NVGs and use position lights, but you know we do battle damage checks and stuff using night vision goggles. We don't use them to do refueling, and in the Air Force and Navy the jets that I flew, we wouldn't take off with them. Uh, we'd only put the goggles on above 2,000 feet uh, or men safe altitude, whatever terrain or something could be up to 4,000 feet or whatever. And then coming back home, we would take the goggles off and fly a sensor trail or a radar trail recovery where you're using uh, either the radar or data link to fly off the other guy and then fly a, you know instrument approach back to landing. Well, whereas some aircraft 
special ops, A-10s, they can land on covert lighting, blacked out fields using the night vision goggles. And they do it all the time and it's something they have to practice. In the, um, in the F-16, when I was in Iraq, we'd use them to taxi around, not because we needed them to see, but because the, the airfield, you know, it's an old abandoned Iraqi airfield or taken over Iraqi airfield. And there were rocks and debris and it wasn't well lit. So we used the night vision goggles to help us maneuver our way and make sure we didn't suck up a rock because, you know, the F-16 intakes a big hoover. We didn't use them the entire time. And personally, I usually kept them in the case and only used them um, when needed. I didn't like wearing them because when you're wearing the NVGs, you know, they, they weigh a couple pounds, so it's not, they're not incredibly heavy, but they're on your, the front of your head and they're putting pressure on the back of your neck because they're trying to pull your head forward. Even if you had the strap, the nape strap and the mask on, it's still putting pressure and trying to, to pull down because it's just weight. And if, you know, if you had 20 pounds worth of weight, at 1G with all the stuff on, brackets and everything, well now, you know, 5Gs, you've got 100 pounds of force on your neck. So pulling Gs with it wasn't necessarily comfortable, necessary evil, but as much as possible, I'd just leave them in the case unless I absolutely needed them, but I wasn't a huge fan of, of that part. Uh, also, if you were doing any kind of day to night or night to day operation, my first flight in Iraq, uh, I was, when I showed up, they said, you're going to be a day guy because you're a young lieutenant. You don't have a lot of experience with night vision goggles. We want you to be a day guy. Well, my first day sortie actually briefed at 2 a.m. and took off at 4 a.m. So even though the majority of it, it was a six hour sortie and the majority of it was going to be during the day, uh, the first part was at night. And the first time I took off, where at a, whereas I'd been used to flying at night in Homestead, which is near Miami, and Phoenix, which is, you know, a big city, I there was no cultural lighting in Iraq. Um, most of the, the lighting was off at night. So you, when you take off, it's just like taking off into nothingness. It's an abyss, it's just darkness. And the F-16, because of how you sit higher, there's no canopy bows, there's no references or anything like that. You do have more likelihood of spatial disorientation. And I, it really hit me as soon as I took off. So uh, it took me a while to adjust, had to recognize, confirm, recover, and get on the round dial so that I wouldn't end up uh, upside down flying into a mountain, but uh, definitely some risk there. But flying at night in the day, you're wearing night vision goggles for the first hour or two. And then as the sun starts to rise, it becomes too bright. So there's a period where it's too bright for night vision goggles, but still too dark to really see anything. Uh, and you just, you just have to deal with it. So you have to w bring a visor, uh, which you know, takes up space, but you bring a visor because you swap out the bracket, put the NVGs away and then, then go. Overall, the NVGs uh, definitely help. They're, you know, it's definitely something good. It's something you have to learn with. I was never, a lot of guys don't like flying at night and I'm kind of one of them. You know, I'd much rather fly day VFR, but you know, it's a necessary evil. We fly 24 hour operations when we're in combat. So, you know, it's something we have to get used to. And, you know, we own the night. That's that's our job. We have to be able to take the fight to the enemy day or night, 24-7, 365 days a year. So it's just something we train to. It's something we have to be good at. Anyway, so that's night vision goggles. Hope that explains it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you're having a great Memorial Day weekend. Uh, please pick up Finny Flight. Check out Folds of Honor. Make them tell you no. And I will see you next time.